you believe that one person can really make a difference in our world and in our own community? My guests today certainly do and feel that way. Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. I was going to say the star of our show today is just a beautiful young lady, Katie Fitzpatrick. Katie's 16 years old. She's a parishioner at the Church of St. Monica's in Jackson, also a student at Jackson Liberty High School. Katie's making a difference in the lives of the children, not just around here, although she does that too, but more importantly, the lives of the children at St. Jude Orphanage in the Diocese of Kasana Lawera in Uganda, Africa. Katie started her own jewelry business called Beads of Love. And whatever she makes, the proceeds from her little business, all the sales go to the children at St. Jude Orphanage in Kasana Lawera, Uganda, Africa. Also with her today is her mom, Katie's mom. Thanks for coming, Valerie. That's Valerie right. Fitzpatrick. Valerie is also, beside being a mom, she kind of gives a lot of inspiration, a lot of love to Katie, and makes sure Katie does the right things in life. And with us also is the director of religious education at the Church of St. Monica in Jackson, New Jersey, Mary Gossie's director. Mary, thanks for also being with us today. It was, I guess, your stories, Mary, that allowed the experiences of Uganda to penetrate the lives of, of mom and daughter here and inspire them to start this project to raise money for the little children in the orphanage. So welcome, Katie and Valerie and Mary, to the show of The Catholic Corner. Boy, oh boy, how does that all happen and how does it all start? Maybe, maybe you can start by telling us how Katie came to know about the plight of the children in Uganda. I guess I was blessed that um, I was able to be on the delegation in 2003 that went to Uganda, to Kasana Luero. And what I saw there, of course, changed my entire life. And I was blessed to go back again in 2005, 2006. But the stories, the things that I, I saw really changed my heart. So I couldn't keep them in my heart. I had to share it. With the children in St. Monica's Religious Education Program, they heard my stories. And when Katie was in her confirmation class, they had to do some service. And Katie's project was her almost perfect chocolate chip cookies, almost famous chocolate chip cookies, that she did uh, dry ingredients of cookies, and she put them in a jar with ingredients and, and labels and recipes, and she sold them. And that went to Cassano Luero. And in August of 2006, when I went, Katie appeared with a pillow, a huge pillow that she had made. She wanted me to bring it with her. So I shoved it in my suitcase and brought it there and took it to an orphan and gave it to her and took a picture and brought it back to Katie. But Katie's heard my stories for a long time. And I guess it touched her heart. And this year, her story was? Beads of love. Um, at first, I've always been making jewelry on my own it's nice to know that, you know, you're wearing things you've made. And I've always been wanting to sell them at different town days or craft sales. And I finally got the idea that maybe I could do it for something like a good cause. And I know all the stories Mary has told me are really amazing and they really need help. And um, I figured it, I could make the jewelry because I love doing that and have it go to something good. Now, you got this idea from Mary's trips to Uganda? And, uh, and, and to sell the jewelry, because that's been a part of your life and mm -hmm. part of your experience. Yes. How did you come up with the name Beads of Love? I was throwing different names around, and I wanted something with love in it, because they were made with love. So uh, I figured Beads of Love would be appropriate for that. And how long have you been making jewelry? Like from the time you were like a little kid? Many years. Many years. I remember when I was little making all the big bracelets, beads of little parties, and like that. Have you given some to your mom? Yes, I have. Uh, that's that's a, a marvelous, marvelous thing. Treasured Katie, gifts. Treasured gifts, mom. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, what kind of jewelry do you make? I make hemp ne necklaces, hemp bracelets, um, like beaded necklaces, beaded bracelets. Tell and us a little bit about hemp. Is that the is that the the string you use, or what is? Yes, that's um. Uh huh. This kind of string. Ah, so. Those are all the knotted bracelets and necklaces. Now, do you have to knot them yourself, too, or, does it, you, yeah. or do you buy the, the hemp like that? I knot them. <laughs> it actually comes in a roll. I see. Giant roll and 
So you, you do that and that keeps you out of trouble <laughs> or, or gets you into some trouble. <laughs> the, uh, and some of the other jewelry you have here, can you tell us a little bit about it or, or how long it takes to make it or is there special jewelry for special things? Um, I buy, we had giant buckets of just all different kinds of glass beads. Uh -huh. It only takes me about probably 15 minutes at the most to put it together. and To make one necklace, I guess? Yeah. She's quick. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So, and how about the small ones? They're like little bracelets. Do they have any special meaning, or you just kind of make them for different occasions? Just kind of make them for different occasions. And they're different colors, so that I guess you young women have to match your <laughs> your other suits and everything That's, that 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 goes with all of that. How uh, how much jewelry have you made? I made about thirty three, thirty four necklaces, and. About 32 bracelets in total. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now, are you one of these young ladies that can make this stuff without even looking? You know, you're like you're doing something else? Yeah, I can. I yeah. used to watch my, 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 my grandmother. You know, she'd be knitting away and not even, not even looking. Mm -hmm. And that's, you, you, you do that all by yourself now. Yeah. Does mom help you? Or anybody else help you in that family? Or is this, this is just your, your business? Mainly just mine. My sister helped me with one or two of them. But. Uh, well, you got to give her a little credit. What the yeah. heck? <laughs> just a little sister? Older sister. Older sister. How long does it take you to make, you said 15 minutes to make a, a necklace, and are there anything more intricate? Do you have to kind of take a little more time, or? Um, sometimes I'll add, with the hemp ones, I'll add beads along the way, so that'll take a little more time. But I'm kind of imagining now, because you know, I'm a man, I don't know much about all this stuff here. But I'm imagining that sometimes you make them and you say, you got a, a different idea, and say, oh, I could, I could add this color or that color, or I could do this or I could do that. Very, very interesting. Now, do you ever make them so that they uh, have a religious symbol? I mean, do you ever put a like, cross on them or those kind of things, or is it mostly just for the decorations of? Mostly just for the decorations. Okay, that, that's terrific. That's terrific. Now, can I ask this question? How much money did you raise? I raised about five hundred dollars. Ah, five hundred dollars. In Isn't one that? weekend. One In weekend. one weekend. One weekend. Oh my gosh. Weekend oh my blowout. Gosh. We called it. A what, honey? A weekend blowout. A weekend blowout. Everything was sold out that one weekend. Now, were you, was anybody else selling anything, Mary, or was it just, just Katie's? It was just Katie. She sold it after Mass at St. Monica's, and she came to Religious Ed and sold it for one session, and she left because she was sold out. Mm -hmm. They were just, everyone was so excited. They were just so beautiful. Boy, that is just amazing. And, and they guess they bought them for their own children or their own use or whatever they wanted for to do. Christmas gifts. It was actually the Christmas oh, season. Oh, you're, you're a smart business owner. <laughs> so you did it right before Christmas. Yep. How could you, how could you lose? Isn't that terrific, huh? And the nice part is Katie said she's going to do, this is her first annual one. She's going to do it again. So this mm -hmm. is going to be something you'll do and do and do. Yes. Uh, do you ever think of expanding? I mean, can other young ladies like yourself start making them so you... You know, I actually, uh, um, a couple of my friends were helping me uh -huh. make them, and as the years or as the next sales come, then I'll have them help and expand that. This way. is a this is a growing business. <laughs> yes. I have to let the IRS know about this <laughs> pretty soon. Isn't that marvelous, huh? And uh, and you just always sell it at St. Monica's. That's the the only place so far that you've been selling it after yes. after mass. Yes. And after the CCD sessions. Okay. The high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. The high school yeah. religious ed. Uh, and they, they went all in that one weekend. It oh, just wow. was one weekend. And what, some of the customers who bought things, what did they say to you? The main reaction, I was, you made all these? Or how That's long did I'm that saying. take? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and um, a lot of them were wondering if I'd come back and they liked the cause it was going to. So they knew when they you, knew. you had yeah. some kind of advertising of where it was going to go or mm -hmm. some pictures maybe? Yeah. Well, Posters. Posters. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, are you going to go to Casano Luera? Hopefully one day. Maybe when you get the, uh, another, another year or two old mom, mm -hmm. something like that? I think so, yes. At least, yes. yeah. Yes. Well, you got to be careful. It's, <laughs> yes. it's, a, it's a long, long trip to go there, but it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Tell me, Mom, if I can just say, Mom, sure. Valerie, what, uh, what was your response when, when young Katie started to say, gee, I got an idea here? I was very amazed, but it is typical of Katie to be so thoughtful of others. Initially, she had thought about doing something like this at the school craft show, but she turned it around and thought of giving all of the proceeds to the children in uh, Casano Luera. 
And so my husband and I were amazed and uh, supported her wholeheartedly. Surely. Fed her lots of cookies and juice and <laughs> whatever, popcorn while she was making her goods over about a three month period. And uh, just very. Gotta live on, gotta live on popcorn. <laughs> Katie's an example. We always say that Katie teaches us, and we've said that always since day one. She's got a beautiful heart. Well, I'm sure that heart just didn't come. I'm sure mom and dad had something to do with these hearts. You know, I, that's, uh, I've watched a lot of moms and dads, so, you know, and it's, it's a great, great, great way. And I think it's a, a great blessing for our, for our church and families and, and we as a family of God. And I know I can say this to you, honey, as a, as a priest, you know, to, to just look at you young people, you know, being inspired and doing things. And, and it's almost like saying, well, here's the baton, you know, we're, we're ready to pass it over a little bit. But that doesn't mean we, you know, we don't, just keep working together. Not true, mm -hmm. Mary, when you teach them in your religious ed program? It certainly is true. And, and I find that the youth understand the stories. When they hear the stories of Cassano Luero, it touches their hearts. And they, their ideas are just positively awesome, like Katie's. They just, uh, the children want to help, and they don't let things stand in their way. They just do it. And that's how Katie is, a determined girl who was going to do a project. And she even told me what she wanted the funds to be used for. That's right. Katie had a list. So you could have chosen mm -hmm. what they could use for. Yes. And um, I had them go towards music, um, like instruments, different art supplies, and of course extra food if they need. And, and the people there are very, very joyful. You know, music is, is part of their, their inspiration Absolutely. and their life. Mm -hmm. it's just, that, is, that is just terrific. And someday, you know, you might even meet some of those youngsters and you'll say, wow, you know, maybe, uh, maybe my, my efforts have helped them to become a great singer or, or even just when they, when they play their music at mass and those kind of things. Mm. That's, that's, uh, that's great. Other children, have they, beside helping you, has anybody come up and said, gee, well, this is what Katie's doing. Here's what I'd like to do. The children at St. Monica's, every year we do something. And this year we are doing, uh, we had a deacon who passed away. But before he died this summer, very suddenly, he was in the office every week with a different chicken. We were going to do a chicken project. So Deacon Bernie must made 30 different chickens. We had Chicken of the Sea and Chicken Little. We have all these chickens. So in honor of Deacon Bernie, we're doing the um, chicken project. The children also just... I would say about 200 pen pal letters just went over. We're writing back and forth to our school, which is an awesome thing. Um, they heard the story, the people of St. Monica's heard the story about the blanket, that there was uh, an accident. And when we ran up the goat path to get to the clinic, a woman was just shaken. And I asked uh, the head of the clinic, Sister Angelina, about was there a blanket? And she said, the blanket is in use. They only had one blanket. So they had a blanket, a shower, so they could raise money for blankets. So that happened. And then there was a concert just recently. The jail and prison ministry, they came to me and said, what's the situation of the prisons in Uganda? So I found out about it, and it was pretty bad. A room that usually 10 people, there were 40 people in, and cement floors. And when everyone laid down, there's not even enough room to roll over. No water supply. So there Part of the money was for Redeem Her ministry here, and the other part was for Cassano Luero for the prison ministry there. Boy, isn't that, and, and somehow they all dovetail together. They all do. And the more I, I see, and the more I see young ladies like yourself, and, and young boys too, the more I realize that, you know, this great God of ours is just marvelous, marvelous example of bringing us together as a, as a family. and. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and it's always nice at Mass, sometimes we say, you know, well, my brothers and sisters. And it's just a nice way to feel that we are really brothers and sisters, no matter where we go and, and, and what we do. And Valerie, I, I'm sure uh, young Katie's always been that kind of a kid, even when she was growing up. She, I know you mentioned that she taught you guys a lot. Some of the, yes. What's some of the examples that young Katie has inspired you with? Her ways of dealing with her friends and family, um, always through kindness, always through love and thoughtfulness. Um, kids growing up uh, most of the time naturally, you know, have their own tendencies towards the self. Mm -hmm. And um, but Katie seems to be headed in a very different direction um, in caring for others. And um, Does Katie know what she wants to do yet in life? 
She's got a good idea. Yeah. I think I want to be a child psychologist mm. and do psychology research in that field. Well, you're on your way. You're certainly on your way. Were you happy with the results of your business? I was very happy. Um, I was glad it was all, they were sold out. And did you expect that? I, w I did not at all. I mean, I know I made a lot, but. <laughs> and what did you do? When you, were, you, were you with her when she was selling it, Valerie? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I didn't know she fun. skipped home in the house and said, <laughs> guess what, Mom and Dad, I'm all sold out. You know? <laughs> Isn't that, that, that is just terrific. So, so your, your success was there, and you're going to build on that success. Yeah. And still with the, with the beads and the, and the jewelry and, and all that kind of thing. Tell me something now. I know just from what Mom said and, 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 and Mary said, you're a great young lady that's got a great spirit. Have you learned something even more from this experience? I've learned that one person really can make a difference, even if it's a small difference, it's still something. And that, you know, there's not that much holding anyone back, even small things like just making a bracelet. And, go to and sometimes good. just making the bracelet. That, let's say it takes you 15 minutes of your time. Mm -hmm. That 15 minutes is changed into, I don't know what you charge for a bracelet. What do you charge for a thumb of these? Um, bracelets were $5. Okay. The really small ones were $1, and the necklaces were 10 Okay. So you had your prices on them. Mm -hmm. No haggling. I mean, nobody could come <laughs> in and say, well, how about nine ninety five? <laughs> <laughs> Because some places in the world, they'll do that. That's you know, true. you know, They might even do that in Uganda some places. You know? But there are, there are marvelous people, and you have to go see them someday. That would be a nice, nice thing to do mm -hmm. because they are so filled with, with joy and, and love, and, and you can just feel the excitement. You know? mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I hope that we, we maintain our own excitement about God and God's love and, and God's blessings. And it's great that you learn from something. Sometimes we yeah. just do it, right, Mary and, and, and Valerie? And, you know, Sometimes we don't take the time to think that, wow, what, what's the impact on this? Mm -hmm. And you know, when you look at the scriptures, you know, and you, you realize he said, you know, you fed me and you clothed me and you nursed me. And you said, when did we do that? And the good Lord will say, well, you, you know, Katie, remember you made the beads and you did all of that and you transferred it into, into the, the, what you wanted to do for those marvelous people. And that's, uh, that, that's great. So you're, you're, are you thinking about doing anything else in the, in the future besides making the beads? And uh, um, even as a teenager, what... Uh, What's some of the impact that you think will influence your life? You said you might study psychology in a way. Mm -hmm. What other things might you study or what, what might you want to do when you uh, get the, uh, the power to have your business grow and grow and grow? Um, probably continue to give to the children in Uganda, help them out. Mm -hmm. So you, children is a, is a real part of your life. That's a, that's a, that's a tremendous, tremendous thing. Now tell me, Mary, you, you, you're, you've been doing a lot of work with youngsters for a pretty, pretty good long time. Um, has the um, has the project Beads of Love uh, has it, it how has it affected your church community and uh, um, I think what it's done is it's shown a lot of people about our youth today mm -hmm. that they can do things and they can change the world like Katie said one person at a time look at the good that she did um, one of just one dollar going over to Uganda in shillings is enough to actually save a life. It will buy medicine for a non-complicated case of malaria. It would also buy milk for a week for a child that's starving. So and when you think even about water, this, you know, I think the, the, the need for water and, and those water kind of is things. Clean water. You know, so important for you know. clean water is, is mm -hmm. just so important. Yeah. And, and I think the children in Uganda, just the fact that somebody cares about them, that somebody has tried to help them so far away, that, I think that makes such a difference for them. It gives them such a feeling of hope. And through this partnership, they feel hope, they feel love. And I feel our partnership is a bridge that connects the Diocese of Trenton and the Diocese of Casano Luero. Now, Mary, you've been there three times. Three times, yes. Can you tell us some stories maybe about, uh, or some of the stories that maybe have, you, know, you told uh, Katie here? And uh, uh, how about stories about the orphanage? You know what, it's, okay. it's the little children. St. Jude, St. Jude Orphanage is right there at the Cathedral Parish. And one of the things we noticed when we were over there, um, they didn't have any books. So um, money has just reached them over there. And Father Charles is in Monsignor. They're going to go and they're going to shop and they're going to get some books for the children. One of the stories, I got a prayer intention from Sister Rita. And what she said was happening was bad men were kidnapping the girls and selling them to the witch doctors for slaughter. Horrible, horrible story. 
And she ransomed one little girl that was taken away, and they tried to take two other little girls away. And these were orphans that were going back home. They were living with their aunts. So Sister Rita had to take them into the orphanage. And it was such a horrible story. And she said, I'm writing you this with tears flowing from my eyes. She said, if only we could have a fence. So we told that story. And a very generous couple said, we're going to have that fence. And we're going to protect the girl children and protect the sisters. So there's going to be a fence there at St. Jude Orphanage, which is wonderful. Another homeschool group heard the story that malaria was the number one killer. So what they did was they raised enough money that every child in St. Jude Orphanage, every teacher, including the cooks, just last week received bed nets, treated bed nets. So therefore, that will save lives. It's just a wonderful thing. All these wonderful projects, they're projects of the heart. When the children hear the stories, they react, and they do marvelous, wonderful things. Now, you have you brought back some pictures to, to show the, uh, the children oh, yes. and the we, community? We've brought back many, many pictures. Uh, as long as somebody sits still long enough, I pull out the pictures, and I start with the stories. And uh, I think the nice part about it is the people here in the Diocese of Trenton, the, the more people that hear, they feel related. They feel that relationship with the people in the Diocese of Casano Luero. They feel that love, even though they haven't been there. They know it and they feel it, that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's and it, awesome. How about some of the stories that have touched your heart, Katie? Any particular story that you said, oh my gosh, that's, that's, that one really, really touched me and allowed me to think a little bit more? I just remember hearing about how they don't have any food, like only one thing a day, maybe two days, three days, and I just couldn't imagine even missing a meal or how we have it here and how a meal to them is like once in a while. You just, mm -hmm. They just can't go downtown and buy some potato chips mm -hmm. and, uh, and a big hoagie or something or a big, uh, yeah. you know, that's, that is so, so true, you know. But I think they are the things that make us all, uh, you know, want to reach out to them. And I think you know, when you said, Mary, that sometimes, uh, you know, they take youngsters, girls, or, or some of the boys even, you know, and they take them away and try to indoctrinate them into some, some ways that are just inhuman to people, you know. I know when I was there one time, I, uh, I, I still remember a woman, you know, she had a little business, and she said to me, I said, well, what do you do? And she said, I make banana gin. I said, banana gin? And she said, well, come and I'll, and, and I'll, 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 I'll show you. So I went with her, you know, even, even a little bit deeper, and I, I thought it was like a movie. There was this, this, you know, big drum and a still going, and you know they had because they, they had a lot of bananas, you know. And all of a sudden, she said, "Would you like some?" And I said, "Oh my gosh, I don't know. Here I'm in the <laughs> middle of Africa. I'm going to have banana gin." So she gave me some, a little, a little, a little glass. And actually, the glass wasn't too clean, you know. But I said, "Oh, I guess the gin will take care of anything else." Yep. And uh, so, yeah, they, they, it's amazing how they can, uh, you know, do things and and how they're learning now to. To make, even, the, even with the growth of bananas and things, you know, mm -hmm. how they learn to, to allow the bananas to even get, get, get more produce and, and to, to do more with their own families and their own children. And even some of the, I'm sure some of the bishop has probably told you a lot of the stories. Uh, has he been down to, to St. Monica's? Bishop to Smith. Bishop Smith. He was yes. there for confirmation. We did a, a bulletin board for Uganda for him. There you yes, go. Yes, we did. Yes. And hopefully in Uganda, there is not a bishop. The bishop, Cyprian Luanga, while we were there, he was elevated. He is now an uh, archbishop. Yeah, and maybe a cardinal someday. Maybe a cardinal someday, yes. So we're, we're waiting very anxiously for a new bishop in Kasana Luero. And actually, um, you know, it's hard to ever say who's going to be who but someday. But if ever as the church grows with the Spirit of God, I wouldn't put it past... Uh, Bishop Cyprian to uh, someday not only be a cardinal, but who knows, who knows if they ever look towards Africa to have a, a pope, you know. So when you go, you go see Bishop Cyprian and you get his little autograph there. <laughs> so, you, know, it's a, you know, someday he might, be, he might be the pope for you. Now tell me, Katie, you're a great young lady, and, I, and we really mean this. Uh, you know, young people are, are, are so beautiful and so good to us. Uh, what advice do you have for other young folks like yourself? Uh, um, how about, what advice would you have for other parishes or other people listening to our program today, the, especially the, the young ones your age? I would say that you can really make a difference in their lives by not taking much time and doing anything that you know you have a talent for or not necessarily something you just think would be good, something you know you can do good and you know would help out. And 
So maybe we can get other religious ed programs. I, I, I think some parishes are doing things, aren't they, Mary? Or a lot of parishes are mm -hmm. doing things, and you know we have our website, which is www.crstrenton.org, and there's a list of projects and things that we have done. And if anyone, you know, is interested, we have a speaker program that will go and we'll talk and we'll tell the stories, and we go to a lot of places, and a lot of people are interested. The group that was just um, the Island Group. They wanted to do something special as a gift for Bishop Cyprian. So what they did there is a, a school called the Componi College that just opened in February. They almost didn't, they didn't have doors or windows, but they wanted to do a library. So they, in honor of Bishop Smith, there's a Bishop Smith Memorial Library that they did there. So they have books and just a book is such a gift. And it's so exciting, it really is. So there are many, many needs. And what we try to do is we try to be, be that bridge that we can, the needs to the people here so that they can really help. And there is, it's just such a wonderful opportunity. It's personal relationships, and that's the most important thing. And the people, I'm sure all the children over there in St. Jude, they know about Katie, as if Katie is a friend of theirs. They really do. So it's, it's just really great. And this Jesus, Mary, and Joseph homeschool group, they all know that that you know they worked hard to try to get the bed nets for them so it's just it's just a wonderful wonderful thing that bishop smith in all his wisdom did i really believe this is going to be his legacy to us yeah well he's got a lot of legacies that he's leaving for us and, and a lot of stories that come out of with bishop smith and and, and also bishop cyprian you know yes. they um they, they kid around a lot together i don't know if you've ever when bishop cyprian was here a few years ago uh, they like to they like to kid each other very very much you know and uh, and um, in fact I still remember one story I hope I can tell this story but he said uh, he said you know we have a lot in common Bishop Cyprian said this he said we uh, we are both uh, bishops we both studied in Rome and we both are canon lawyers and he said and we're both a little larger <laughs> but that's that's the great humor that uh, that they humor. share with each other and and. Uh, and, and, and many gifts that have been given through, through Bishop Smith and, and Bishop Cyprian, the gifts that they bring back to us. Maybe it's not always monetary things, but you know, it's the, it's the joy that they bring us. It's the prayer that they share with us. It's the great, I think, almost, almost seeing church grow in a, in a beautiful, beautiful, tremendous, tremendous way. So Katie, I have to, I have to praise you and, and all the great young, uh, young people of, uh, of our diocese and also of, of our age. Mom, did a great job. Thank did you a great very job. Much. And Mary, with all the children that you teach and love so much, uh, it's really, really a blessing. The Catholic Corner, God bless you. Post Office Box 5147, Trenton, New Jersey, 08638. Please be a part of love, be a part of that extension of God's love to even places like Casano Luera. Thank you. Very much.